Hey guys, you're watching the Best Practices Show where we take a look at the best business practices from the best dental practices all across the country. And one of the big things that people are having a challenge figuring out is marketing. And so I have one of the world's experts on marketing in dentistry, and she is awesome, Dr. Anne Marie Gorsica, who wrote the book on marketing. So don't miss this. Grab a pen and hit the share button. We'll see you in a second. Hey guys, welcome back to the Best Practices Show. We are absolutely crazy grateful uh, that you're watching and love the feedback and love the questions. So keep asking them. And uh, I just, I don't even know what to say. Just thank you so much. And uh, today's show going to be a great one. Do not miss this. Uh, and we've got one of the worldwide experts on marketing and it is fun. I am going to talk about her in just a second before, before we get started. Couple show notes. We are shooting this live on Facebook. So if you have questions during the show, please add them to the feed and I'll make sure we ask Anne Marie directly because we want you to get the stuff out of here that you came for, for like good, good answers. And then also if you're watching this later on, feel free to ask a question and we'll have Anne Marie get back to you and you're going to see she's phenomenal at marketing and social media and all the stuff that I think I struggle with. So I'm going to tell you all about her. She is, uh, I got her book years ago uh, as a recommendation from a couple friends. And then I kept running into the book and I read the book and read it again. And it's one of those books that's just a great book that you can open up any page and it's crazy helpful. Um, and so you're now on your third book. Is that right, Anne-Marie? That's correct. And uh, I'm excited to announce that it will be out in just a few more weeks. That is awesome. And she's a phenomenal writer and just a great thought leader. So I was so grateful to get you on, but it took you forever to get, a, you know, you're a busy, busy woman. So well, um, my pleasure to be here with you today. And I yes. love everything you do, Kirk. I've been following you for years. I love your videos. I love your energy level. It's well, contagious. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I get a lot of it from you guys. You, you, I mean, you'll see in a second. She's just equally matched as far as energy goes. Um, now, if people don't know you, who is Anne Marie Gorska? Tell us your story. Well, I'm a board certified orthodontist practicing in my private practice in Antioch, California. I'm originally from Massachusetts and I uh, went to school in Massachusetts. I did my residency in Chicago and then I moved to California and like everyone who moves to California, once you move here, it's hard to leave. And I decided to stay in California and I opened my orthodontic practice here from scratch. So for any dentist uh, who opens their practice from scratch, marketing becomes critical because you're in a new community and you're trying to get people to know you as quickly as possible. So uh, I opened my practice and uh, within seven years it grew to be quite large and I have kept track of every single way that a new patient has come to my practice. So over the years I accumulated quite a few patient feedback, what caught their eye that brought them into my practice. And the summary is really in my book, 201 Marketing Tips. These were all feedback tips that patients told me, this is how we found your practice, this is how we heard about you. And the thing in the book is it includes many tips that dentists might not think about in terms of how they can acquire new patients. So uh, everything in the book has worked for me. And I would uh, encourage the readers to try some of the tips in that book and see how it works for them. Yeah, absolutely. And so if you don't have her book, just get her book. It's one of those things where if you don't even know what to do for Mark, you can just open it up, just go, I'm going to try this. It's really good. And I actually love your calendar, which I use. It's awesome. So, well, thank uh, you. 
And also, I want you to speak to this because you and I talk. It has not been an easy road for you because sometimes people watch you and they go, well, Amory, it's so easy for you because you have this great practice and you just opened up from scratch and things were great. There were times where you, you know, you called crying your dad and wondering if you'd even made a good decision opening up a practice, right? Right. And I write that in the introduction of the book because it is hard for everyone. And even being in practice, for 27 years. One thing I will tell your audience is marketing never ends. Mm. You think that after 10 years, this was a surprise for me, you would think that your practice would just be on automatic, Mm. but it isn't because, especially for a specialist, because with every patient that we complete their treatment, we need to replace that patient with a new patient. And same thing in general dentistry. You have patients who leave your practice, they move away, uh, maybe some of them die off, you know, and you've got to replace those patients with new patients. So marketing never ends for any of us. And even professionalism is marketing. Uh, Lots of people, when they hear the word marketing, they think of advertising. But marketing is much, much broader than that. It's your customer service. It's uh, your public relations in the community. And it's also your relationship with your dental colleagues and with your medical colleagues. So marketing is very, is very broad. And there's a lot to think about when we brand our practice and market our practice. Yeah, and I love your classification systems because you, you organize your, your information because it's real-time information. I mean, you're studying all the time what's working and what's not working. And I just, I love it. And so one of the classifications, you've got it in three big categories. Take us through those three categories. Uh, If so, if I'm a dentist watching this, how can I look at my practice? Okay. Well, the book is divided into three sections. The first section is internal marketing, Mm-hmm. Everything that we do within our practice for our patients. So internal marketing is very strongly customer service based. The second aspect is public relations. How are we going to bring our practice out into the community? And how are we going to bring the community into our practice? And then the third general category is, I call it, relationship marketing. It's external marketing also. Our relationship with our dental colleagues and our medical colleagues. Yeah, this is awesome. Now, I just want to pause for a second too, because the landscape and marketing has changed quite a bit. Can you talk about why this is such an important conversation in this day and age on marketing? Yes. Well, back uh, when marketing really got its birth, I would say, is the 1960s, uh, marketing was classified by the four Ps of marketing, Uh, product, place, price, and promotion. And anyone who's taken a marketing course and you had the McCarthy textbook, that's what you learned, the four Ps of marketing. But in the internet age, with the advent of the internet, which was uh, websites and emails, that sort of thing, uh, there was a period when we went to the th- the four C's of marketing, which was um, customer base, customer uh, communication, uh, convenience, and cost. Okay, mm-hmm. and but now we're in the social media age, and we're in the age of the four E's of marketing, and those four E's are experience, evangelism everywhere and exchange okay okay so uh and i take that directly from ogilvy public relations which is the largest ad uh agency in the world but we are at the four e's of marketing now and the internet has changed marketing forever yeah and uh and if there's one thing i would say to your viewers if i had to pick one thing like just one thing that you could do today to start to get more of a footprint in your community, I would say to update your internet platforms. That would be get a mobile website, 
get involved with all social media outlets, uh, including Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube, make some videos, incorporate videos into your website, because uh, that's really where it is in this day and age. People are going to go to Yelp to find your practice, Mm. or they're going to look you up, and you hope that you come up top of the list in your community. So I think that if you had to just uh, begin one new program today uh, after hearing this show, I would say to invest a little bit of time and money in updating your website and updating your review sites. Right, right. Well, reviews are a big piece of this also. You know, uh, when you talk about having people look you up, you you would hope that Yelp isn't the first place. They will go there, don't get me wrong, uh-huh. to check you out, but you don't want them to go there on accident and find something by default. You want to be intentional about the messaging that you have on your website. Now, yeah. um, you, now you don't need to spend $100,000 on a website either, do you? No, you don't. Um, you need to find um, a good website company. And um, my website is a few years old now. I'm very, very happy with it. And I update it regularly. Now, one of the best ways you can update your website is to have a blog and have the blog integrated into your website. If you have a blog, then your website is automatically updated every week or perhaps even twice a week. So that is going to tremendously help your search engine optimization. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and, uh, and you're so heavily involved in social media too, and maybe you can give us some insight on that. But you know, when you, when you talk, when you and I were talking about this and you mentioned this in your book, a lot of the marketing that people can do now to better position their practices, again, you don't, you, it doesn't require a big budget. It just requires better thinking, right? That is correct. And it requires uh, good team involvement in the office. So let's start with the first aspect of internal marketing, which is your relationship with your patients. Okay. On a daily basis, there are many things you can do to get new patients. The first is just to ask, to ask your patients. Uh, could you refer your family and friends to us? Right. And it's very easy to do that if you have a gift card or a share card, which you can give your present patients. You could have a card printed up that would say something like share a smile or refer your family and friends, or you could even have a gift card printed up, say uh, a gift for you given from your friend so-and-so for Gorska Orthodontics. Okay. Yeah. So um, another thing is you want to spread word of mouth about your office. You want your patients to leave your office excited about their experience, and you want to give them the tools that they will go out in the community and talk about your office. So my number one tip for that would be have fun. Okay? Right. Have fun with your team. In our office, we always have a theme of the month. Now, this week, Mother's Day week, we're going to focus on mothers. Give a little gift to mothers. You know, make you could give a rose. You could give a free whitening kit. But you want your patients, your mothers, whatever, to leave your office talking about their experience. And you want to change it up every eight weeks or every three months or six months, whatever you want to do, but you want to keep your ideas fresh and you want to keep having fun because your patients will never love your office if you and your team don't love it first. So it's what you do that you spread and share and engage with your patients that is going to get them talking in the community. So my number one tip would be to have fun. Yeah, and have some type of a system where you're having fun because oftentimes it's too hard for the dentist to try to come up with this or it's too easy for a dentist to retreat to their private office and not communicate with their team. But you're you're heavily involved with them, uh, your team. And then I want to go back to one thing because when you're talking about your different themes, one of the things that I learned from you in your book 
is you map this all out. So you have not only your internal and you've got it listed for 12 months, you've got your external listed for 12 months, and then you have your community base. Can you talk about that and why that's so important? Because you're not just shooting from the hip every single month and you go, oh my goodness, you know, Mother's Day is next week. We should probably do something. You're well, you're well, you're arc, you're you're the architect of this many months in advance. Well, whatever you do, when you have your team meeting, mm -hmm. ask three questions. Number one, what are we doing for our patients? Mm. What are we giving our patients? Okay. Number two, what are we doing for the community? Uh, are we doing anything? Are we hosting an event? Are we putting anything out uh, in the media, whatever. And then the third thing, what are we doing for our referring dentists to stay in touch, have a relationship and be top of mind? Right. So I give an example that I have a monthly team meeting in my office and every month we try to pick three activities one focused on patients, one focused on the community, one focused on referring dentists. Okay. And then you, from this participation with your team, you get them involved in helping you populate this calendar for out, Correct. throughout the rest Correct. of the year. Okay. And you can change it. Every month you can change it. Every year you can change it. That's why in my book, I included a template. You can read the book and fill in the calendar with what appeals to you most. Mm -hmm. which I use your template. I love it. <laughs> I do. We do. It's awesome. Yeah. So other considerations for internal marketing that you would say are pretty important nowadays? Okay. Well, ephemera, the stuff, the stuff. Okay. What's up with all the ephemera? Mm -hmm. Everything that has your office name on it. I don't care if it's a pen, a pencil, a bracelet, a water bottle, whatever. All of those things work because they live in the community and they are lasting. So for example, uh, I can remember a patient came in, initial exam, we ask every single patient, how did you hear about our practice? And this woman replies, I heard about it from a water bottle. Really? <laughs> I said, how did you hear about my practice from a water bottle? Well, I was at the opening day of Little League and you gave out some water bottles and my child used the water bottle. I was putting the water bottle in the dishwasher. I read your name and I said, you know, I need to go for my braces and I gave you a call. Right. I've had patients tell me they've heard about my practice from a pencil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you think I'm kidding, but I'm not. Yeah, uh, that's how people hear about your practice. And in my book, I tell the story, which is a true story, and it's a marketing story about my mother, who was principal of an elementary school. And the elementary school had a mistake in their pencil order for the bookstore. Instead of ordering a gross of pencils, which was 144 pencils, a dozen dozen, they mistakenly ordered a gross of gross. Oh That's my. 144 times 144. Okay. So she ended up mistakenly with 20,756 <laughs> pencils and they were all engraved with the name of her school and she could not return them. Wow. So she made the best of the situation. She had a school wide pencil sale and she gave every student 50 pencils to sell for a dollar each. Well, the school made a lot of money and they decided they would put on an international year. So they had dance, speakers, guests, whatever. All of a sudden, my mother's school started getting awards from the community and her school was written up as a school of excellence and was in the US News and World Report. I kid you not. Wow. But the thing that really struck me was that that year, walking through the city of New Bedford, Massachusetts, which was where my mother's school was, absolutely everyone knew who she was at the 4th of July fireworks from those pencils. Wow. And it can be the same for you in your dental practice. It's such a small thing. But if you were to print up 
2,000 pencils or 2,000 pens or whatever and give every one of your patients 50 or every kid five or every school or whatever, you would be known in your community so quickly. And that's what marketing is all about. You know, you think about a political campaign, right? What do they do? Well, I look at Donald Trump who won, okay? He had a hat, Mm -hmm. which is the number one marketing gift for men. Earning a number one a number one marketing gift for men earning over fifty to one hundred thousand dollars is the cap. And he incorporated the cap, which you can do in your practice. You can have a cap printed up with the name of your office. And he tweeted. And that is an effective means of communication. Mm -hmm. And those were his two marketing tips. Now, in the past, campaigns have used bumper stickers, right? Right. Now, the bumper sticker works on volume. It's something that is not expensive and it is readily seen and it's durable. Okay. So that's why it works. It, it goes out to the masses. Uh, so when you think about marketing, you want to think about how many hits are you going to get for your dollar? Okay. Let's say you have $2,000. Well, you can print something up where you could get 2000 of an item whatever that might be, or you could easily in a day spend $2,000 on something big, but it may not be as lasting, Mm -hmm. you know, or it may not be as effective because it's not in the hands of the consumer. For example, a billboard. Is a billboard effective? I would say no, because it's not in the hands of the consumer. The consumer is not going to stop their car pull over and write down the phone number. Mm -hmm. But if you have something like um, uh, a wristband bracelet, right, that you give out and it has the phone number of your office, well, then that consumer, that child or whoever has that is going to have your phone number and they're going to be more likely to call. So I I like to think about that uh, in terms of marketing, that how many people can you reach, reach response and return on investment? How many people can you reach and get a response from for the the, uh, most cost effective means? Yeah, absolutely. And all these tangibles, I'm I'm guessing because you look at all the research, these are things we don't want to throw away. If we get a coffee mug from you, I would feel horrible putting it away or even putting it in a box. I mean, I'm going to keep that. And it's going to right. be present in my everyday living, everyday life. Um, and then I, I have to ask you, so if that's the men's number one marketing uh, giveaway, what's what's a woman's? Do you know? Well, oh, I would say for a woman, customer service is is everything right i would agree uh and for a woman uh women make 60 percent of purchasing decisions in the united states so i would say for a woman you've got to treat women well you've Mm -hmm. got to be patient give them attention um let me give you um uh, an internal marketing wow experience that i got from my own dentist uh, that I'll share with you. All right. Okay? It's an internal marketing customer service tip. When I go to my own dentist, Dr. Ken Dupree in Antioch, California, and I have my uh, hygienist do my teeth, and then he comes and does the exam. At the very end, they give me a warm face cloth to wipe my face. To me, that is the wow experience. They've got the spa experience. They've got the soft music playing. They've got the incense candle burning. They've got a clean office. They've got the warm towel. And then when I leave, they give me a goodie bag with my new toothbrush, my my chapstick, my trident gum, whatever. And going to my dentist is like a mini vacation. 
<laughs> so let's just say I'm the average consumer. I'm a mom, I'm a wife, and I'm the average female consumer. I think for a mom or a woman, it's the experience. It's uh, how am I treated in that office? It's right. not the price. It's not the price. It's not, it's uh, how am I treated? Yeah. And I think, you know, I've, you can, you read so much about them. Women are more dissatisfied right now by how they're spoken down to, uh, ignored and just, um, spoken at and not included in the conversation. And that, that can, that's a whole nother conversation, but I totally agree. Yeah. I would say for female patients, take your time. Mm -hmm. Don't rush them. I'll tell you my orthodontic practice every morning. It's all female patients. It's all adult women. Mm -hmm. And I'm one step away from the hairdressers, you know, or the gym. They're either going to go to the gym, the hairdressers, or they're going to come to the orthodontic office. And we are in no rush to finish them quickly. They can stay as long as they want. They can have a cup of coffee. They can have a blanket while they're in the chair. They can stay and talk. And I think that is what is customer service to women. Yeah, that is awesome. What other, when you look at the internal aspects, what other considerations should we have for internal marketing? Uh, well, uh, one thing I would say is to focus on the team and the attitude of the team. And every patient that you have, you're going to greet them and say, uh, how are you today? Mm -hmm. And the patient is going to respond. And then they're going to ask, how are you today? And I would like the team's response to be fantastic. We're fantastic. We are so happy to see you. We're so glad you're here. And I would like my team talking to the patient, engaging with the patient, and giving them as much attention as possible. Uh, we have a rule in my practice, uh, I don't care what the team talks about as long as they're talking to the patient. Mm -hmm. One thing you don't want happening is that the team members are having their own private conversation in the background right. and not spending the time engaged with the patient. Yeah, that's awesome. So I, I love the response. Fantastic. Because you will hear fine. Oh, it's okay. Or when you go to the airport, the TSA guy says, live in the dream. Yeah. You know, when you ask and him how. And let's talk about reviews, okay? Mm -hmm. When uh, you get a compliment from a patient, that is the time to subtly suggest that they give you a five-star review. Mm -hmm. So when uh, someone goes up to the front desk, the front desk can ask, how were things today, right? That's right. your customer feedback. How were things today? Oh, I just love it here. I'm so happy every time I come here. Oh, that's so wonderful for you to say that. Would you mind giving us a review and saying that online? Because that would really help other patients find our practice. Oh, I'd be happy to. Yeah. Okay, here are some suggested sites. Okay. You know, so keep the conversation going. That's awesome. Now, now, oh, now if you keep sense, going. if you sense that you get the response, I wish uh, whatever that things were not great. At that moment, immediately hand your patient a customer survey feedback questionnaire because you want to know what can you do to make that patient happy. Right. Okay? So that's another internal marketing thing that you could have at your front desk, customer uh, feedback forms where the, the patient could write down what you, they would like for the office, what their suggestions are. And that way you can implement what the patient would like. If you do that, you should not get any, any negative reviews because right. you've addressed the patient's needs and you've corrected whatever they'd like you to correct. And you care. You care right. about how they feel and you want the experience to be great for them. Yeah, and you nailed it. You're a business that shows you care. Even if somebody's unhappy, half of it is just listening to them about what they're unhappy about and uh, and getting that. Now, the other piece I want you to talk about, how important are reviews in your practice right now, Google reviews, and how important are they just overall in dentistry? Well, in Northern California, we're living in Yelp land because okay. Yelp is in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So most 
patients will go to Yelp. They will use Yelp like the phone book. So Yelp is important. And I would suggest that every dentist spend a little time updating their Yelp, putting some photos on Yelp, uh, addressing or giving responses to their reviews, or maybe even putting a video on Yelp. Right. Now, this is important, too, because if you're watching this, some dentists refer to Yelp as just evil and it's this site out there. But you can go on there and intentionally pre-post the information about your practice, your bios and everything so that it's populated with information that you write. Correct? Well, that is correct. And uh, if you love Yelp, Yelp will love you. Mm. (laughs) So you're in control you're in control. So don't view it as uh, a a reactive site. View it as another website. Right. And make it the best that you can make it. Right. Now, I want to ask you about all the other components. I've got so, I've got like 30 questions lined up for you. Okay. So as far as internals or anything, you know, before we jump to externals or anything you want to say about internal? No, I think we've gone over internal marketing pretty well. Let's go to public relations. Okay. Let's go to public relations. Um, Public relations is your brand in the community. And how are you going to get out in the community? And how is the community going to get into your practice? Mm -hmm. So one thing I like for public relations is I like to give my patients uh, a T-shirt that says Gorska Orthodontics. Um, The women, I give them a t-shirt that has sort of like rhinestones on it. It's kind of BB design. And the men, I give them sort of like a baseball shirt, okay? Because I consider my patients walking billboards of my practice. And if they wear their t-shirt to their appointment, they get a coin and they get uh, prizes for wearing their t-shirt. So uh, ask yourself, is your practice t-shirt worthy? You know, will your patients wear your T-shirts? If they do, your practice rises to the level of a rock concert, right? right? You go to a rock concert, you get the T-shirt. Right. So wouldn't it be great if you could look out in your reception room and see all these happy faces of your patients wearing your T-shirt and in the community wearing your T-shirt? Yeah. So so that's just one little tip. Now, um Getting out into the community, whenever the doctor can get a speaking engagement, whether it be with a business networking group, Rotary, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, city council, whatever, uh, take the opportunity and speak. And if you have the opportunity to speak about a clinical topic, that's even better. If you have the opportunity to show before and after photos, that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. So one of my tips is take before and after photos and have display notebooks that you can bring with you to events or bring when you go somewhere to speak. Um, I give an example in my book. I went to a business networking uh, event and I passed my book around on uh, interdisciplinary treatment And after the event, which was one hour long, a woman came up to me in the parking lot crying and said, oh, my son is missing so many teeth. I don't even know where to start with his care. Can you help me? Sure. So I invited them to my practice, complimentary orthodontic exam, because there's a reason why a patient hasn't gone to the dentist. It's either fear of the cost or fear of the treatment or both. Mm -hmm. So alleviate the fear. Tell them, I'll take care of you. Don't worry about anything. Let's just see what's going on. So sure enough, the boy was missing about eight permanent teeth. And so was the husband. And I sent the patient to one of my best dentists. And I sent the patient to my oral surgeon. They also did a complimentary exam. They each came up with their treatment plans. The three of us got together. And both of those patients started full treatment at full fee. And these were big cases. They were like $40,000, $50,000 cases with multiple implants for several missing teeth. So sometimes 
the amount of attention, time, and care which you show a new patient is going to influence whether or not they start the big case in your practice. Right. And so I encourage people to uh, be your own evangelists of your own care and go out in the community and help people. Yeah. And this isn't about bragging. I mean, sometimes dentists have a hard time with this is, you know, I think you got to let people know what you do. And the other cool part is if you're watching somebody speak on a subject, they're obviously an expert or perceived as an expert on the topic. Don't you think? Well, uh, when I spoke at Rotary, for example, I showed a lot of implant cases. Mm -hmm. And after the 20 minute presentation, a man came up to me and he said, you know, Dr. Gorska, my dentist has been telling me for five years that I need orthodontics and I need implants. And I have just been too afraid to get started. Mm -hmm. But after hearing your presentation today, I'm no longer afraid. I'm ready to get started. That's and awesome. a lot of times that's what it is. It's the fear of the treatment or the cost or both. Mm -hmm. And if you can just alleviate that fear by telling your patients, we'll take great care of you. We'll take it one step at a time. You're in no rush. Just proceed at your own speed and we'll be with you every step of the way. If you take that approach, you're going to be successful. Yeah. Love that. Love that. Now, public relations, as you're already sharing with us, is not necessarily a press release or an agency working for. I mean, this is these are efforts within the community just to kind of spread the word, right? That's correct. And I would say the number one public relations tip is show up. Mm. Show up at events. Yeah. I, I don't care what it is. Just, you know, Get out there and meet as many people as you can and invite people to your office. Invite the Girl Scouts, invite the Boy Scouts, invite the Mothers Group, invite the Chamber of Commerce, invite anyone you can invite to hold a meeting in your office or if you can participate in some way uh, by helping out the community, do it. Visit the schools, be a career day speaker. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Go to the opening days of baseball, soccer, uh, hold a patient appreciation party, invite all your patients. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a fantastic way. I agree with you. You know, I've seen dentists on the East Coast and West Coast. They'll do career day where they'll do both. They'll go to the school and then they'll also have the school come to them, which is awesome. And, um, you know, and then patient appreciation party. This has been one that's worked forever really, really well. Can you explain what that is and how that works? Well, in my community, we have a uh, a water park that's almost directly across the street from my office. Mm -hmm. So my personal patient appreciation party, my favorite one, has always been the summer splash party, where we rent the park, we rent the park on a Saturday night and we go to the park. Now, other parties that are successful, are movie nights or movie mornings. Um, I'm thinking about Star Wars is coming out, uh, Christmas, New Year's 2018. Mm -hmm. You could rent a movie theater on a Saturday morning or a, a school day uh, vacation morning and have a movie day. You could have a bowling party. You could have an ice cream social. You could have a kid's day. You could rent the jumpy jumps. Mm -hmm. Or you could just plain have an open house or you could have a VIP reception. Tell your patients they're VIPs, have them come in. Or you could hire a photographer and say, we want to take pictures of our beautiful smiles, our beautiful patients. And we're going to have a, a photographer in our office. Or you could invite Santa Claus to come to your practice, you know, yeah. take, take Santa photos with the kids. The possibilities are endless. It's just the only limitation is your own creativity and imagination. Yeah. And of course, you have to implement what you think of. So implementation and action are the keys to success. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else in public relations? This is really good stuff. Well, I would just say to um, 
think about your social media. Think about making some videos. Uh, think about updating your website and uh, posting as much as you can. And authentically posting, you know, and looking for an opportunity. Now, do you assign somebody on your team that's responsible for the posting? No, I do not. I do okay. not. Because okay. it is uh, it is almost impossible for a dentist, unless they're married to their office manager, to find someone who truly cares as much and represents the brand the way the dentist will represent their own brand. So, you know, it takes like five minutes a day. Okay. And when you look at great people in social media, I mean, really famous people, they're doing their own posting. I mean, right. it is their authentic voice. Mm -hmm. So that's the beauty of it. Uh, you do it yourself and it takes a very short amount of time. Yeah, that's really funny, too, because you know when somebody's not posting their own social media. You know it in a matter of seconds. Um, yeah, well, I use I use some posts from my social practice, which is a company that I like very much, but it's my own words. So right. I may use a photo, but I put my own text in. So you can do that. You can do something like that. You can get help, but... Uh, just hiring a social media company alone is not going to do it for you. There are several people that have hired social media companies and the implementation isn't there. So the implementation and the action is really the key to success. Right. And can you, you mentioned video. What, how effective is video nowadays in marketing? Well, video is very important. YouTube is important because YouTube is owned by Google and videos have uh, get a lot of um, attention. So integrating a video into your website is definitely going to give it a higher ranking for uh, SEO. Okay. Okay. And then you have, you actually do, you, do you guys, you do professional videos? I've seen some of your videos. Yes. But I yes. I have uh, done professional videos and uh, I recently did a few patient blurbs where I hired uh, a local company mm -hmm. out of Sacramento, California, and I did eight videos, one of which was an introduction to my practice. And if any of the viewers, if they go to the front page, homepage of my website, they can see that video, the introductory video. Okay. And it kind of sets a tone for the visit to your office and everything. So um, now you also mentioned direct referral marketing as the third kind of element. Can you describe what that is? Okay. Well, the final aspect uh, relationship marketing, I call it, is the direct referrals from your dental community and your medical community. Okay. And in that aspect, I, I say that it is uh, your responsibility to educate, communicate, participate, give of yourself, and produce. Produce the goods. Okay, so uh, I'm very appreciative of every referral that I will ever get. And it is my responsibility to produce straight teeth and a functional occlusion for whoever refers me a patient. Mm -hmm. So uh, one thing I like uh, for educate, um, I think team days are extremely good for uh, any dentist or any specialist to host an event for the community. Uh, my a general dentist upstairs uh, hosted a very nice event uh, for Lumineers. Uh, he was the only dentist in my community to host such an event. I went to it. And he's now the number one Lumineer producer in the San Francisco Bay Area. Wow. And all he did was host a, an event. And he invited everyone to it. So if you host an event, you will definitely get your name out there very, very quickly. Um, I like to host educational events. Um, I had Howard Ferrian last year, mm -hmm. and we had a blast. Uh, we laughed so hard, our faces hurt, and we had stomach aches. Yeah. But um, a lot of the referring dentists asked me, when can he come back again? 
Yeah. You know? So that was a big success for us. And uh, we, I like to do that every year, or every other year. Uh, it's just a great thing to do, not only for my practice, but for all the other practices as well. Yeah, it's awesome. You could you could have fun with Howard doing anything. Like just, oh my he's gosh, just a, he's just hilarious. So. <laughs> now, um, let's talk about the team for a minute. Okay. Um, I think it's very important that the team, every team member, be on the same page, and you want everyone rowing in the same direction. And in order to do that, I think it's very very important that everyone know the mission statement, live the mission statement, and deliver the mission statement. So do you have a mission statement? If you don't have a mission statement, create one. Now, my mission statement is very easy to remember. It's caring professionals serving valued patients. And everyone on my team needs to know the mission, live the mission, deliver the mission. And I tell them there's no excuse for them not knowing it because it's on the wall. I actually have it posted on the wall. So uh, the key word in my mission statement is serving, that we are there to serve the patient. So all of our decisions are made. Are we serving the patient, our valued patient? And are we caring professionals? Once you know the mission statement, your actions are going to be guided by that mission statement. So, for example, you're not going to hear my team members saying, what time is lunch? Mm. (laughs) Right? Because that has nothing to do with being a caring professional serving a valued patient. You focus on the patient in front of you. You don't think of yourself. You think of the patient. Right? Yeah. Um, And um, Peter Drucker said that a mission statement should fit on the back of a T-shirt. So mission statements are short. Take, for example, Kaiser Permanente. Their mission statement is one word, thrive. (laughs) That's their whole mission statement. So uh, one thing I see in dentistry is that these mission statements that teams come up with are so long and evolved and you know they get together and everybody throws a word in the middle of the table and then they put the sentences together and the mission statements are like three paragraphs long the problem is no one can remember the mission statement and no one lives the mission statement so that's my first tip my second tip is to know your core values and at Gorska Orthodontics we have three core values clinical excellence outstanding customer service, and a great patient experience. And I want everyone on my team to know the core values and live the core values. I also put those on the wall. So I told my team, there's no excuse for not knowing it. It's right there on the wall, right? Yeah. And um, and when I do my annual reviews, I ask them to recite the core values In my book, I say that your core values are your elevator pitch, Mm. that when my team member leaves my office and they go down to the local grocery store and they're wearing their Gorska Orthodontics shirt and the lady in line says, oh, Gorska Orthodontics, I need braces. Tell me about Gorska Orthodontics. They should immediately be able to recite the core values like, well, we are clinically excellent. We've been in practice 27 years. We deliver a great patient experience of outstanding customer service, and you're going to love our practice. Please come by. Here's my business card. And that's another thing. Every team member should have their own business card, and it should say their name, not the doctor's name, their own personal name. And why is that? Because when that new employee gets that business card, her mother and father or his mother and father, friends and family, they're going to be so proud of them. They're going to be handing those business cards out to every relative, every friend, high school friend. And that's a big part of your marketing is your team. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes I, I run a little thing at my uh, monthly meeting, I just say, okay, let's have a contest right now. Who can give me their business card the fastest? (laughs) And someone will pull it out and hand it to me. And someone else will say, you know, I ran out, I ran out, I need to restock. 
And that's not a bad exercise to try that, you know, and give a little prize to the person who gets it out the fastest. Yeah, I'm going to try that. I like that a lot. <laughs> now, I'm also going to speak to this because you see some dentists that are just too cheap to do this because it's cost and um, and they don't want to invest. In, and I think you would agree, like these are investments. You're making invest. They're not costs. They're investments. No, they're investments. And all of these things will pay for themselves. Right. Two, three, four, five times over. Right. You know, these are, in my opinion, necessities for running a business. Yep. You know, so you've you've got to pay attention to the marketing. Right. And I'm sure you could probably track them too. which referrals come in from which team members and who That's are your best correct. referring team. Do you do that? Yes. yes. Oh, you do. Yes, we do. <laughs> and do you incentivize that or or not I, so much or okay. just recognize it? We don't incentivize that. We mm. incentivize our production goal. OK. Of the month. Because we work as a team All right. and we want every member of the team to equally contribute to the overall goal. So when I give bonuses, everyone gets a bonus because it can't just be one person. It doesn't work. Let's say, for example, only the doctor and the treatment coordinator are looking at production. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. Every member of the team needs to know, where are we? And you might want to do it on a daily basis. Right. You know, when you do your huddle, which in my office is eight minutes long, and it takes place at 11.52 a.m., and it lasts exactly eight minutes. <laughs> That's the very first thing we look at is, what do we have on the books for the month? How many starts do we have? How many new patients do we have for the month? And we work on it on it as a team. And I have given every team member one number that they are responsible for to help build the practice. Mm -hmm. So one team member might be responsible for doctor referrals, uh, little white cards that come in with the doctor referral. Another team member might be responsible for conversion rate, how many of the initial exams convert into starts, and who's calling those patients that haven't signed up the very first day. Another person might be responsible for visiting doctor offices, dropping off some goodie. Another team member might be responsible for visiting schools, dropping off pencils at schools. Uh, another team member might be responsible for initial records um, or final records or giving out uh, referral cards. Another team mem member might be responsible for reviews. How many patient reviews do we get? But you want to take the workload and divide it up and make people accountable right. because what you don't want on your team is a zero. You mm -hmm. don't want a team meeting where you're holding up the whiteboard, you're holding up the scorecard and you're going down and you've got, okay, you're at 70%, you're at 60%, you're at 50% and then you've got a zero. <laughs> or maybe the person doesn't even show up that day. Maybe they're absent. Okay. Right. Well, that person's not going to stay very long in the office. That person's going to be gone because they're not producing anything. Right. So, so that's another important key part of marketing is it takes engagement. It takes implementation. Yeah. And, um, and your office culture, which is your office marketing, whatever you're doing, let's say you're having smiley face day. And you're going to be giving every patient a smiley face sticker and a smiley face poem. And um, you're decorating the office and you're going to give them a yellow bracelet. Okay. And you've got one team member that says, I don't want to do it. Okay. That person needs to leave. Right. Mm -hmm. you, that cannot be tolerated. Right. So uh, my response would be, well, this is what we're doing as a team today. And this is what I hired you to do. 
So if you don't want to participate in our office activities, I'm going to need to hire someone else who can do your job the way I'd like it done. And I think that's um, where some doctors um, fall short is they, they need to take charge, realize their office. It's not a democracy. Mm-hmm. It's you're the owner. You're the leader of your practice. Right. And you, you're going to implement the activities you want and everyone is going to participate. Yeah. I'm so glad you said that because it, it is not a democracy at all. And then also, too, I would imagine it's about expectations. When you hire people, your it seems like your team would be very mar- marketing centric, very outwardly focused. And again, going back to your core values and your core values. Let me say this, too. They're not democratic either. Those are yours. And you're letting people know this is what your business is all about. Is that That's true? Correct. That's correct. And this question comes up all the time. And now we delve a little bit into human resource management. But marketing is your office culture, your office climate, and the care and how you deliver the care to your patients. Mm-hmm. And um, you have the right to set the tone set the dress code, uh, set the verbiage, uh, set everything, uh, because that is your brand. So when tattoos are not your brand, tattoos are not my brand. Okay. It doesn't mean I'm not going to hire someone with a tattoo. It just means you have to cover your tattoo if you want to work at my office. And as the practice owner, you have the right to state as written in your policy and procedure handbook, that tattoos will be covered. That is not your office brand. Or to have a dress code or to have a uniform, you have that right. Right. Yeah, and dentists sometimes are just afraid to say, hey, to be really clear, and they're too focused on being nice uh, when that helps dramatically. What um, what other considerations for marketing you know, in today's market you think are really important as a dentist, either a mature dentist or even a startup dentist? Well, I think, uh, I'll say it again, I think it is the actions that you take. Mm-hmm. And Seth Godin, who is the number one marketing guy, always said, what's important is that you do something, right? right? Just do something, mm-hmm. right? Everything you do will have a response. It's just a question of how big. And you are going to track what the response is. The most dangerous thing in marketing is to do nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Google says this, 26% of all businesses are virtually invisible. You know, you can't find them. And so yeah. I agree. I, you, you know, it's, you have to do something. So pick something that works. And if you're really struggling, I'm just going to say, I'm going to plug your book forever. It's the easiest book in the world to ever use. Cause if you just don't know what to do, you can just open up to any page and there's something applicable, uh, authentic that you can, you can just use right away. Well, I'll, I'll just uh, tell my own story uh, that when I went to Antioch, California, I opened my practice. The first six months are very hard. And I shared with you and I wrote in my book, after three months, I was virtually crying to my dad on the phone. Okay. Oh, what's going to happen? You know, how will people find me or whatever? But due to marketing, due to the things that we've spoken about, getting out in the community, visiting the community, visiting everywhere. I have visited the police station, city hall, every school, every magazine, newspaper, just getting out there, meeting people, staying active. Gradually, your network grows and grows and grows. And then you hire your team and then your team spreads your name further in the community. And then Due to the activities that you do, you get more and more recognition in the community. So uh, implementation is the key to success and stay active and keep, keep working at it. And like I said, it never ends. Even though I've been in practice, you know, 27 years, 
you still need marketing as much as the first day that you opened because things change, demographics change, people move, uh, things change, they're constantly changing. So you need to stay with the times, stay active, stay working on your marketing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, we get so many great questions and Deepak asked another one. You know, we've seen how marketing has evolved over the last few years with digital marketing, the importance of reviews management and such. Any ideas on what we should expect over the next five to eight years? Great question. Wow, that is a fantastic question. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we will see less, less paper printed marketing. Mm. Uh, I think that flyers, um, they have a place, uh, but I think that the printed ad will start to be seen less and less. I think that uh, more digital marketing is going to come into play. And uh, that's why I emphasize today to spend more time on your digital footprint right. and spend less time or start pulling out of those activities that have not given you the same results as some of the more up-to-date Yelp, Google, website, that kind of thing. You know, mm -hmm. there might be some things that worked for you five or 10 years ago that don't work for you now. And right. in marketing, you need to change it up also. You don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. You mm -hmm. want to change it up. Right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I would agree with on the digital side of things. And I think it's even going to be tougher in the future digital wise because, you know, the algorithms are getting tighter even on Facebook or, um, you know, you're so good on Twitter. I don't I don't even know how Twitter works. But uh <laughs> You know, getting out there and get, just getting started, like you said, is just, it's just key. Uh, and it will be interesting to see what happens in the next five to eight years. In I, I, would but say, I would say one thing right now is to focus on text messaging. Focus on the cell phone. Mm. Um, years ago, we would say calling a patient would be our number one thing. Now it is our last thing. Our number one thing now is send a text message. Number two, send an email. Number three, send a postcard. The very last thing is the phone line. Because a lot of patients in California don't even have phone lines anymore. They, right. they use their cell phone exclusively. Yeah. So I, I would say in the next five to 10 years, I think phone lines will become obsolete. I think it's yeah. everything will be cell phone. Yeah, it's funny you say that because I'm going to pick up my car right after this, and I don't think I've talked to the guy at all. He's texting me what's going on, you know, yeah. um, and all the dealerships and car repair places now use them. It's very true. Yeah, so good stuff. Now, if somebody wants to get a hold of you, I, again, I just love your stuff. You are, you're, you're just a genius on the marketing side of things. I'm sure people are going to have more and more questions for you, and I'm going to have you back on other subjects here. Well, how can people get a hold of you? Well, the best way to get a hold of me, I, I do love Facebook, and yeah. you can always get in touch with me almost instantaneously if you friend me on Facebook and send me a message on Facebook. I also do love Twitter. I will admit that. Mm -hmm. If you want to send me an email, uh, you can use my direct email, amgortho at aol.com, uh, or you can go to my website, but my website email goes to my front office. So that will take a little bit longer to get to me than if you use my personal email. Or right. you can call, call my office and talk to me on the phone. Yeah, you got to check out <laughs> got to check out her website. You also have to read her book. So you wrote the book on marketing and I'm just going to plug this real quick cuz I love your writing. Uh, you you also did a book on the morning huddle, correct? Thank you. My second book is on HR management. Okay. And uh, I worked very hard on that book. I'm very happy with it because I had excellent input by uh, attorneys. Uh, the book was proofread by Art Curley, mm -hmm. who is the attorney for TDIC, Dental uh, Insurance Agency. So it is 100% legally sound. 
And I had several HR professionals give me input on it, including Barbara Free from HR for Health, um, Alia Ramkian, uh, human resource advisors, and then uh, also Cedar HR helped with that. I had David Harris help me with the sabotage and embezzlement sections. Love and it. I had clinical psychologist Wayne Pernell of Pride Institute win over the dysfunctional behaviors with me. Mm. So uh, it's 52 case studies and they are all real. They are real case studies from real practices that were either my practice, a friend's practice, an HR person's practice, or uh, given to me by an HR professional. So I give the situation and then I give the solution to the situation in an HR uh, way. Wow. And my third book, I don't, I'm not going to give away what it's on. Because it's coming out in a few weeks, and I want people to anticipate its arrival. But uh, I, once again, I had excellent, excellent input from some real experts in the field. And I always seek out the experts. So uh, I hope people will buy it. I think they will like it very, very much. Well, as soon as you're ready to release it, we're going to have you back and <laughs> just reveal the topic here. <laughs> And give us some secrets. And you are just always an awesome giver of great information and so helpful. And I know you care about this great profession and ortho and uh, you're just you're just one of the greats. So I'm so thankful. Um, I well, really, really you, appreciate Kirk. this. And I, I just want to end by saying that um, these books were born out of a course which I gave at the University of the Pacific Arthur A. Dagoni School of Dentistry to the orthodontic residents where we had a practice management course for several, several years. Uh, my classmate from the Harvard School of Public Health, Department of Health Management and Policy, Dr. Maureen Valley, she was the director of the course and she invited me to come to the course and I give six lectures in that course, which are uh, marketing, teamwork, customer service, treatment coordination, management systems, and human resource management. So if I live long enough, my dream is that I will get all six of those lectures into a book. So when the third book comes out, I'm going to celebrate that I'm halfway done. Yeah. But I'm hoping I'm hoping I'll be able to fulfill that dream to get them all done because I'd like dentists to have resources so that when they graduate, they have something that they have a foundation they can go to to get the baseline information on what they need to know for their practice. And I think that these topics pretty much encompass all the baseline topics and things that you need to know to run your practice. Everything you do on a daily basis falls into one of those six categories. So um, I'm excited to participate in the dental profession and make a little contribution. And it is my labor of love for dentistry to get these books written. Yeah. Well, your labor of love is not making a small contribution. It's making a huge contribution. I am one very grateful that you are my friend and I love learning from you. So oh, thank, thank you. you so much. Stay on for a little bit because I have so much I want to talk to you, but we'll say goodbye to everybody else. And I'll just say this, if you're watching this and you haven't read any of her books, just get them. They are awesome. They are permanent staples in my library. I just pull them whenever I just need a little inspiration and she is an excellent writer, very thoughtful, and it is all uh, applicable research. So thank you so much for being on. So thank, thank you, you all for watching and uh, we're so grateful you guys are watching. If you enjoyed this today, do me a favor, just hit the share button, share it with your friends because obviously we'd love for you to share the word and we're growing like crazy, over 15,000 followers and quarter of a million views per week. This is crazy. So um, just keep, we just, we, we're just grateful. I don't know what to say. So. Uh, until we see you next time, keep watching the best practice show. You guys all have a great day.